you something problematic here. See that line sitting on top of my spool? That's not a good thing. I'll show you how to get that out in a second. So one of the best ways to do that is to give yourself a super, super forecast and see, it's gone. And just make sure that that line lays back down and then it's out. And you don't have to worry about taking it all apart. We might, got, we might've got something here. We do. Christopher Brown, this might be your redfish. Let's see, it might be a trout though. Feels a little trouty. Feels a little trouty. It's trouty, kids. Trouty McTrouterton is here. So, <clears throat> it's a baby trout. And their mouths are pretty delicate. They often come out pretty quick. I hear them grunting. So, we're going to get some fish grips on them. Hello, Mr. Trout. Thank you. Nice of you to open up like that. So there you go. That is a speckled trout. It's a pretty fish. Uh, I would guess he's no more than about seven or eight inches, maybe. Oh, there's our there's our uh, bonnethead friend that we caught a couple weeks ago, cruising around in front of us. We'll take a shot at him. He could be fun, you never know. So he is 11 inches, so let's let him go. See you, dude, later. All right. So we're fishing this super highway. The tributary that we looked at is right behind us. And what we're hoping to get is fish the predators traveling this way going into that tributary behind us, looking for food. Uh-oh. Got a pretty meaningful bump just then. Uh-oh. Oof. And again, we're sort of being tagged, I think, by some smaller predator fish, but that's okay. Where there's smaller ones, there's bigger ones. Ooh. Christopher Brown. Christopher Brown. Uh, oh no, it is Mr. Trouty McTrouterton, but a decent one. Let's get off these oysters real quick. Thought we had a redfish there for a second, but as it turns out, it is a trout and a decent trout at that. Always good to get yourself away from the oysters when you're gonna play with a fish for a little while. Let's see what we got here. So a decent trout. I get our bump board. And I like to stress these fish just as little as possible. So I like to get prepared and set up and then deal with them. And hopefully he'll open up for us. Open up, dude. I'm not interested in collaborating with you. You just caught me. Okay, so we got some fish grips on them. Nice part about these fish grips is it lets us handle these fish in a much more gentle way. See, so we got that hook out really gently. No damage to the fish. 
highly recommend these rubberized nets for that reason. They're what's called hook safe nets. And let's take a look at what he weighs. Not what he weighs. He could weigh him, but I don't wanna. He's pretty light. So, Mr. Trouty McTrouterton, 13 and one half, just about. 13 and a half. So not bad, not a bad little trout. So let's get him back in the water. Just as soon as we can. He seems interested in leaving and there he goes. So, a couple of trout so far today. We've got an 11 incher and a 13 and a half. Let's see if we can get something else. And it seems like there's predators moving in this area, so let's give them a bait and drag it along with the tide. Let's see if we can't garner some interest. So what what just happened, I don't know if you saw the line twitch, but if you get a hit that feels like something literally crashing into your line, coming this way, it's generally a redfish. Trout are going to take it and run. Redfish are going to hit it like a freight train. So my guess is that was a juvenile redfish that hit it. And we're oyster bound. Again, no big deal. You just get to the other side of it. Give yourself a little bit of slack. And it pulls right off. No big deal. So the trough that I was talking about is about right there. It's close. Uh-oh. We got him. We got him. He's running at us right now. Probably a trout. He feels light. Yep. Okay. So another trout. Easy, easy, little guy. Pop the hook out. He's bleeding, so we're gonna get him back in right away. So another example of, you know, put the bait out there in front of a predator and they're going to bite it. So that is our third trout today. Having some good luck with the speckled trout on today's outing. Trout are some pretty voracious little guys. They will oftentimes hit a bait that's bigger than them.
And when they're hungry, they're hungry. And I think that was just a good reminder right this right that second. I still had my bait in the water. I was trying to reposition the boat. And I got a big hit. So you know, anytime your lure's in the water, you got you got a shot. <clears throat> Even when you don't, you're not paying attention. And I have a hunch that that last trout came on a bite as it hit the water. Because we, you know, that, that lure landed, it seemed to anyway, that lure landed and he was on almost immediately. And that's usually a pretty good indicator that there's hungry fish feeding and they're engaged. You get lots and lots of oysters. You gotta kind of fish through the snags and then you get hits like this. Again, I think that's a little trout. If I had a bet money, I would say that's what that is. Probably not big enough to spend a lot of time worrying about. But what I've learned is where there are trout predators, there are redfish predators, because they all eat the same stuff. And the fish are pretty actively feeding right now. Lots of little fish nibbling. And again, if we were using gulp right now, like we're getting we're getting hit constantly. Gulp is really nice because it stimulates hits. Hits aren't really the thing right this second. They're not, hits aren't really at a premium today. We're getting plenty of hits. But if we were using gulp, we would have gone through four bags of gulp by now. Because gulp is, and I like gulp, it's a good product, but it is not a durable product. It's really not made to be. And you tend to lose the tails on gulp grubs on a regular basis. The gulp shrimp tends to get you know, kind of bit in half, chunks bit off. The advantage to using a, kind of a Z-Man or an Elastec bait is, you know, these bait fish can play with this lure all day long, drag it around by the tail, and we're not gonna have to change out our, our lures. And that's exactly what's happening right now is that that bait is just getting grabbed the tail's getting grabbed by a smaller bait fish or maybe a baby trout and just getting dragged around the water and if we were using if we took a look at our tail right now i, I bet that would tell the story yeah let's see how chewed up that is a chunk out of it right there but again still in great shape so you know, good argument for choosing the right tackle. And I don't get paid by Z-Man. I'm not, you know, endorsed by them in any way. But, boy, they make adorable bait, I'll tell you. And this I don't know if you can see it, but in the water right in front of us, there's sort of a natural mud and oyster. Ooh, there's our... There's our bonnet head friend. There's our bonnet head friend. Here, dude.
See him? He ran. He went under the boat. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning, October 23rd or 4th or whatever day it is. And uh, we are fishing the May River this morning. The tide has just turned and is starting to come in. So we are going to see what's out here in Hungary. Ride this current a little bit. Give the maybe the bigger predators something that they're a little more comfortable seeing. Which is a bait moving with the current. Oof. I don't know if you saw it right next to where I just cast, but there is a big, big predator down there. I don't know what that was. But we are going to give that particular marine creature a chance at a nice little snack. Because that was some blow up, boy. That was a blow up for sure. What that tells me is there was either a bull red running in there or maybe some kind of some kind of shark. As we know, lots of uh, bonnet heads around these days. We can. Convince something to hit us out here. This is a good spot um, as the tide comes in. There's a tributary out, out here and the tide sort of flows up and then flows around this point. Points like that tend to be pretty good shot. Two pretty good places to um, get traveling fish. There's a fish moving right in front of us. Let's see how hungry he is. So what's interesting so far is we haven't gotten a single hit on bait moving with the tide. All of our hits have come on bait moving the other way and the tide just switched so it could be the fish are just still in the mood to see something coming the other way. And that's a tip for fishing here in the low country. You just gotta experiment with it as the tide runs and see what the preferences of these predators are and they'll tell you and what they're telling me right now is we don't want to know from bait moving with the with the tide i know it seems counterintuitive uh oh and that is a trout i believe it seems like a trout hit oh yeah that's a good trout That's a for real trout. I don't know if you saw how he hit that, but we were just sort of dragging it along the surface and he came up from deep to get that. And you'll see the bigger trout do that. Let's get our board. And again, I don't like to manhandle these guys. Um, I like to handle them as little as possible. So I want to kind of get everything together before I pick them up. All right, settle down, dude. Wetting your board helps with not remove all the slime coat. I think he's gonna be a decent fish. All right, all right, all right, all right. Settle down, my friend. Settle down, my friend. Down you settle, my friend. Hook out really gently. That's the nice thing about these fish grips. They allow us to do that. So there you go. Nice little speckled sea trout here this morning. Let's see what he looks like. And he is 
14 inches. So a very respectable trout here this morning. Let's get him released. I think he's pretty much ready to go. And there he goes. So early morning trout bite is happening. And again, we got that hook out very gently and he swam off annoyed but unharmed. And let's get ourselves sort of resituated here. Get our board put away. That was a nice little uh, first catch. Decent, respectable trout early in the morning. And that tells us that they are around and interested in feeding here today. Do it for us for today. Uh, we fished hard today. We fished a good five hours out here on the May River. Uh, we got a uh, pretty respectable 14 inch trout when we first uh, hit the water today. We got lots of other bites. We did have a red on the line, we lost him. Uh, and we did have another trout on the line, we lost him. So, you know, all in all, it was a good trip. Uh, we fished an outgoing tide in the beginning and then uh, we fished the incoming tide for most of the incoming tide. And we are just about um, at high tide now, we're pretty close. So. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video. We took a look today at fishing various tides. Uh, we took a look at uh, me giving advice and then having that advice proved exactly wrong. Um, and that's fishing. But um, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.